Hi everyone! This is going to be a series for tutorials about data mining. And this first tutorial is going to be a revision on Python. This is Dr. Abdul Karim Mohammed Jamal Kanan. So let's start. If I would prefer to say that you should have some knowledge about Python before going through this series, but anyway, this is going to be uh, introductory level and revision about Python, so it can suit it can suit anyone, even if you don't have enough knowledge about Python. But as further we go, I would prefer if you have knowledge, but if you are still welcome to attend these courses or these tutorials and learn more about data mining. So the common task that you usually do when you go to a new, data, new language is to print out hello world. It's quite famous. So in order to do it here, all you need to do is call print function and then pass the string of characters. As you see here, it's hello world. Now, in order to have some part of your code or to add comments inside your code, the only matter you need to do is just you need to add hash before the statement like case here print text to the screen just I put sharp or hash preceding that text and then this could would be uh, as a comment that means the interpreter of Python is not going to treat this as syntax or anything related to the language so in other words it's not going to be executed this is just going to be like something comment added inside the code and by the way this is a good practice sometimes to add some comments to indicate or to define what you are doing at this moment now for you something exercise to do is just you need to call the function print and print this statement python is a famous language and then add comment saying print a statement about python so just you follow what we've done it's quite easy Now let's jump and to see what types of objects are available in Python. So most common types in Python are strings, floats, and integers. So string strings mean you have a set of characters and they are enclosed inside uh, double quotes or single quotes. So you may have both double quotes or you may use single quote inside Python. So this indicates that this is a string and string means that just a set of characters and they're not, Python is not going to read or to understand what's written inside. It's just bunch of characters has been enclosed between double quotes. Of course, later, you may wonder, you may add some special characters, but anyway, generally a string is a set of characters. Now we have another type, which is float, and this represents real number. So if you have a number with a fraction or decimal point, then you need to use float. In this case, like 3.14. Or another data type is integer. So integer is just a number without any fraction or decimal point, like 2022. So this is integer value. Now, if you not sure what kind what type of object you have then there's a function available in python you can call which is called type so type you call it and then pass whatever object you have so here just i'm using directly passing the value of string or float or integer but you may have a variable and then pass that variable to the function type same way so here hello world as you see it's a string 3.14 is float while 2022 is integer now, as an exercise for you, use type function to find out the type for 10.0. So use type function to find out the type for 10.0. Now, again, integers <coughs> are values that have no fractions as an example, one, two, three, but they may also be negative or positive. So same case. Now, to verify that negative values are integers, again, use type anytime you have a doubt or you need to find out the type of your object you're working on remember to use this handy function which is type now for float floats are real values that contains fractions or decimal point so if you want to get more information about float and foo you can also use the package system and then call or just execute the variable float info and this is gonna give you some information about float so 
float and python has minimum and maximum value so the max value is as you see is quite huge 1.79 blah 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 to the power 308 so it's quite big and same for minimum value so here you can get some information about float now again you can use type now how you do conversion between different object types in order to do so just you need to call a function that you intend to convert into so for example here we have 2.0 which is float and we need to convert this float to integer so all you need to do is call the function int and pass the value that you intend to convert it into integer inside the parentheses so here 2.0 then we get 2 and same if you have a string value because string as we said is just set of character so python language is going to do nothing right so but if you need to do some operation like you know this set of character is represents number one which is integer and you like to do let's say some operations on it so in order to do so you need to convert it to the correct or to the actual data type that that fits most for this set of character which is integer so you can do so now if you intend to convert something that is wrong like for example one one is not a number is not a digit you will get an error right so it says invalid literal for integer function with base 10. now on the opposite side if you need to convert to string so you call the function str stands for string and same you can use it to convert integer or float value to string now boolean types is another type of data you have in python and the value of it is either true or false so for and the type the way the syntax works is you use capital t true or capital f or false okay so we don't have an example for f anyway you will get false this one here like where we intend to convert zero to a boolean value so zero represent false one represent one uh, true so why is that? This is how it's implemented inside Python. Okay, so I didn't write this logic, it's just the way it works. So true represents one, an integer value. Zero represents false. Okay, so if you want to convert from integer to Boolean, then you call the function bool. Here you've got some exercises for you. You can write the solution for these exercises in your comment box okay so what is the data type of the calculation 10 divided by 2 okay so think about it and this might be a little tricky if you are familiar with other languages like c sharp so i am telling you if you are a c sharp programmer this is a tricky for you so be careful what is the data type of the calculation 10 and then we have here as you see two division symbol Okay, so actually this is you having integer division okay so it is something to compare the uh, the result between these two 